Hi everyone, welcome to our talk, uh, Drupal at Scale at the Australian National University. Uh, first, we would like to acknowledge the Gadigal of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians of this land, and pay our respects to the elders, both past, present, and future. Also, we want to give a big thanks to the Drupal South team for organizing another awesome event that we always look to attend year after year to the Drupal core and contributed module maintainers whose passion for open source enables our projects and helps our progress. And to my team, Yi, Samundra, and Hong for turning our visions into reality. My name is Dimitri. I started working with Drupal in 2008 when I tried to speed up the development of my computer science degree project. Then I worked as a freelancer for several years and in 2013, I decided to migrate to Australia to start a career as a business analyst. But at the end, I followed my passion and joined the ANU uh, to do what I love the most, building websites in Drupal for Unis. You know, it's actually funny that in our Canberra bubble, sometimes we forget that not everyone knows what ANU is. So it's very important to start this talk with a small Introduction about ANU, because only 60% of us is actually know what ANU is. So located in Canberra uh, since 1946, ANU is the only national university of Australia. It has a huge history and heritage and made a lot of contributions to research, education, and policy. The community has now 70,000 students and 4,500 staff members. Uh, there are some notable members of politics uh, graduated from ANU, and there are six Nobel laureates. Uh, ANU was one of the first institutions in Australia uh, to use the internet, which was in the 80s. Uh, it was mostly for research purposes, and around, uh, around mid-90s there was already 100 websites around the university, believe it or not. ANU has managed its web in a decentralized manner since the beginning. There is a central web team that takes care of the central website. And uh, there are web teams in each of the faculties or colleges that uh, do web development, maintenance, uh, support services for those websites. But they need to follow the branding and security guidelines mandated by the central team. Uh, our web team uh, is for people and we do in-house web development, maintenance and support services for the Faculty of Science and Faculty of Health and Medicine. Uh, the services uh, that we provide have uh, uh, skyrocketed since I joined the, the university in 2013. For example, the number of sites has almost doubled. The number of web editors and web pages has increased five times, and uh, the number of help desk support tickets uh, has been increasing uh, steadily. The websites have become the main source to promote degree projects, uh, degrees, uh, projects, uh, news, events, and enable uh, collaboration across the university. Uh, in terms of Drupal upgrades, we've migrated uh, um, 10 websites to Drupal 10, and we still have 30 to go. Uh, this has been delayed by the rapid release of new Drupal versions, as you know. And uh, we've been waiting for some contributed modules to become available to be able to migrate them all. So how you survive in this evolving landscape where you have uh, lots of uh, support tickets from clients, you have a high number of websites, so we've put in a strong emphasis on uh, sustainable growth, uh, which means we are standardizing our content architecture, templates, site configurations, but we also try to keep things flexible for customers uh, because they have lots of uh, requests, as, you, as you're probably familiar with. And we are also putting a, um, a strong emphasis on team culture by, in, by incorporating agile philosophy, and practices, uh, so that also has a direct impact on our services and keep the team motivated. Uh, our latest Drupal 10 platform has around 40 uh, content types, which have evolved over 15 years. We, uh, 
we've tried to make them as generic as possible, uh, so to respond to a variety of customer requests. In this talk, we are going to show you a few of them. Uh, there are lots of uh, content like uh, to promote news, events, project, research, uh, general information for students, staff, services. Uh, if you want to explore them all, uh, we invite you to visit our website, web.science.anu.edu, where you can find all the templates uh, for our uh, content types. Uh, you will also find our contact details on that page, so feel free to write to us if you have any questions or, or want to have a chat with us. So let's start with our event content type. Uh, before I proceed, I want to highlight that uh, all our content types share same design patterns. We have a hero at the top with a big image or a video. We have a breadcrumb title, some metadata, summary, and a full body of content that can be one column, two column, or a series of tabs. So the first content type that we want to show is the event one, uh, which helps people to promote events from simple morning teas to large scale uh, conferences. Um, I'm going to show you bit by bit and how we achieve to implement that in Drupal. On the right hand side of the screen, you will see the full page and the highlighted section is the one that we are exploring. So on the left hand side, you'll be able to see that we have icons within labels that was achieved by overriding trick templates and inserting material icons, which is a huge library in Google with different fonts that are freely available to use. We use a smart date module to print uh, dates with durations, uh, which is uh, much more user-friendly than the Drupal core one. Uh, speaker, event series, cost are Drupal core fields, which is list of text, entity reference, and long text for, for cost. Uh, uh, we achieved to print the contact in this way by creating a paragraph for that with name, position, email, and telephone number. Behind the scenes, um, we use the layout background module, which allows you to have one column or two column uh, sections with background colors or images. It's very flexible and it's awesome to use. Uh, we use the element class formatter and field label modules that allows you to have field labels wrapped into H1, H2, P, div stacks. So that's, uh, for example, how we had the button, black button on the previous screen with the register. So we injected a bootstrap five class to print it uh, like a button. And we use the layout builder styles that allows you to, to, uh, to have uh, things like paddings, margins, so you can uh, select that style and uh, we inject Bootstrap 5 classes in it. Uh, following that, we use Talkbot.js that uh, creates automatically for you a table of content with, uh, with all the headings that you have in the body text. And, uh, that's what we do in our case. Uh, that table of content accompanies the user as they scroll the, the web page. And on mobile devices, we print it uh, at the bottom of the screen because it's much easier to navigate for users. Uh, for images, uh, we use the Drupal core responsive image styles that allows us to serve the right image size according to the device breakpoint. Uh, to improve things uh, further, uh, we use uh, we serve images in WebP format, that in some cases reduces them even 60 percent, 70 percent. So that has helped us to to reduce the page load times considerably. Following that, we have a schedule of speakers that uh, we use. Uh, uh, we created it using paragraphs that allows us to have multiple events that span over several dates, which uh, usually is the use case for conferences. Uh, to print it in that way, we used views and tweak uh, with, uh, with tweak um, selection rules. So for example, we manage use cases where there is no image for the speaker or there is no biography. So the layout doesn't break and it still looks good. We'll show you the editing interface soon. 
Uh, one standout feature from our uh, uh, platform and across the content types is something called child pages, uh, which is powered by the inline entity form module. So on this screen, you see that uh, if you click on accommodation and transport, or transport, uh, you'll be taken to a separate web page with its own hero, table of content, and full body text. Uh, that approach has helped us to reduce the number of fields in our content types, and we keep things flexible for our customers, so if they need some strange use case, uh, you don't have to create a field for that. You can keep, keep things flexible and have child pages. Uh, they're happy, we are happy, and uh, that helps us to negotiate lo uh, lots of uh, requirements from them. Uh, in the editing interface of our content types, we use something called field group module that allows us to have um, uh, what we call vertical or horizontal tabs in our content types. We have chosen to, to keep them vertical because that gives us a clean look and scalability. You can have as many as you require and the layout, your layout doesn't break and we recommend you to also do that. Uh, one, one cool editing interface is the one that uh, I, I showed you previously, which was for the child pages, uh, uh, which is, again, uh, powered by the inline entity form module. So in, this, in one single screen, you can add new child pages, edit them, remove them, rearrange them. Uh, this is something that was very difficult to achieve in Drupal 7, but uh, with that module you can do it now in Drupal 10. Very user-friendly uh, because they can do it straight away in one screen without going to several forms. You probably ask yourself how we converted that event uh, into a conference. So that's something that is being possible using the Layout Builder library module. Uh, so with that module, you can create several layouts and assign them to different content types. Uh, in this case, we created one for the conference and we set in Layout Builder to print everything as tabs. Uh, so, for example, if you go to the edit page of that event, you select conference and tada, it looks like uh, a new layout with tabs. Uh, one thing that is awesome in Drupal 10 is the ability to overwrite landing pages, uh, which was achieved uh, in Drupal 7 by using Panelizer. And now in Drupal core, you can uh, set to overwrite every single node. This is something that we use for uh, to build the, all the landing pages on our websites. Uh, so the generic landing page content type only has hero, uh, promotional message, summary, and we overwrite every single one of them and we add the necessary blocks to finalize the build of that page. Uh, with this strategy, we don't have to start from scratch uh, building all the landing pages. And there is a lot of work done. Uh, so the power to overwrite uh, pages uh, plus child pages is what we use for our centers and divisions, uh, institutes, uh, this uh, helps us to solve use cases where we are asked to do websites with a website, you know, in, in probably for you also, like everybody wants a website. So, but a, a, in this case where you can have uh, child pages, so we say, no, we, we can have a website with a website for you, which is our center and division template. Uh, so for example, when you go to news and events, uh, we override the default layout of the child page and we insert uh, the entity reference views that points from different content types that point to the central division. We, we print all them, uh, print all them in each of the child pages. So that's how you have list of people, news and events, resources, research, projects, facilities. Uh, so it's basically a website with a website. Uh, one of the co most complex content types that you will find in our uh, templates is the one that promotes degree programs. It's a uh, it's uh, a shop, basically a shop with uh, lots of content on it. So we have something like overview, testimonials, careers, learning experience, fees and scholarships, how to apply instructions, conveners, teachers. Uh, 
to create that content type, uh, we noticed that we use a lot something called content boxes, where you have a title, an image, a summary, and a call to action. So uh, to simplify things, we created that paragraph, and we reuse them across different fields of our uh, in in the edit form. So we avoided to create like six different paragraphs for each use case. And we use it across all our content types, that simple content box. So we use it, in this case, we use it for program descriptions, testimonials, conveners, learning experience, uh, teachers, like for all of them. Uh, so I recommend you to follow that uh, strategy in case sometimes you notice that there are certain things that you can reuse them. So create a paragraph, reuse it in all your content types. And the last one I wanted to show you is our promotional message content type, which we call feature. So we use them in our homepage, on landing pages, on our degree pages. Uh, and it's very, very, very awesome. Uh, I'm going to leave you with Samundra, who is going to present you our project management strategies, uh, team building, and other stuff. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I am Samundra. Uh, before I start, I will just give you a brief about myself, uh, just the web part. <laughs> so I started doing my web development in 2013 when I was in uni with a web competition, which we never won. So after that, like uh, after working in different projects, I started with Drupal in 2021 when I started with ANU. So I think that's the brief. <laughs> so let me just continue with the content. So after this content uh, architecture and uh, content types, uh, let me give you a brief about uh, the project management strategies that were successful in our part of work, just the successful ones. <laughs> uh, so first thing was uh, setting a re reputation. How do you keep a reputation? Uh, the commitment and delivery. Uh, that's how we do it and key. the second thing is defining a web owner when you are working with an organization or some point uh, we define a web owner who is usually a comms person who is the point of contact and the person who helps us to get it approved and launched and that side that helped a lot and Third thing is you have to have a demo site. Like demo site helps us to set limitations and expectations for clients, which help us to define and like make a circle around. <laughs> so fourth, I don't think I need to talk about Agile. It has been talked a lot. So we use Agile methodologies and practices. And uh, lastly, we need to have a defined workflow. As a small team, you need, if you don't have a workflow, then your project is going to go haywire and take a longer time. So as our small team, like trying to do a lot of work, we have a very specific workflow to go through. So even though we use all these strategies, you can't do anything or like it is very difficult to do things. If you are asked to do these kind of stuff that are like bigger projects and we have a small team, like one of these, some of them are here, like you, they are asking for a multilingual websites or uh, they want to connect it with the HR database and they want to place your site in the top ranking of Google or something like this. So I am hopeful about like AI technology, which will help us with the multilingual website or something like that, but it has been a difficult task to like satisfy customer if they are asking that. So we have have some key strategies to manage customers. So how we can manage their expectation, uh, and that worked for us. First of which is good user training. Whenever we launch a website or we keep uh, accesses to some people. Uh, we give a uh, good uh, user training. <laughs> so uh, we usually give in-person user training and we have some document in our uh, like uh, demo website, 
which help them out. So this reduces our help desk ticket and which can, we can focus in some of the projects that we are doing. Second thing is organizing contents in the edit uh, form in a logical fashion so that like we only keep five uh, fields in a logical set uh, as you can see there. So and we keep it vertical as we will be able to scale it easier. It is easy to scale it. Uh, so another thing is like if someone is asking for your, for your landing page what worked for is us is we show demo site we set limitation expectation and uh, devise a strategy then ask for a content usually uh, ask for a content before even you start doing the project usually it will save you a lot of unused project uh, projects or like time for you uh, that has worked for us <laughs> sometimes people never send you the content and it is like past the point so all these things uh, uh, if you don't have a solid team it can't be achieved so we use some strategies to keep our team solid <laughs> and our team culture is defined by Henry Ford's words coming together is beginning keeping together is progress and working together is success so there are some strategies that we use to keep our team together first thing is agile team structure you can see our carbon board right in front of our workplace so anybody who comes on there that is very transparent to everybody what we are working on and how much load we are taking in so nobody asks us like what you are working <laughs> So uh, there are other practices like we have a weekly meeting or things like that. And we have a collaborative culture over there and we can disagree with anybody. That's another point of view. <laughs> OK, uh, another thing is we have got uh, this one on one meeting session every 15 days, like fortnightly with our leader. Uh, so you can see Hong over there and Dimitri, they are having a fake <laughs> to get a picture so yeah we have this one and one so, so that like if you have any personal goals you want to achieve or like uh, you have some problem going on you can freely talk with your uh, mentor or, like leader that has been a great help even to me so Another thing is retrospective session. After that is one on one thing. Like we do a monthly retrospective session with our team to like look after and reflect on our previous month and set our expectations for next month. And sometimes we do it with other teams so that we could get a feedback. So lastly, nothing is possible without a good leadership especially with developers like us what happens is like we are into projects and we go haywire like just go deeper into it and we miss the point sometime like my team leader says don't kill an ant with a bazooka i usually try to do that <laughs> and yes. so like that direction should be set by a good team leader and chain of leadership to help us out that's has been very helpful for us. So finally, I would like to thank all of you to be here. If you have any question, please ask us questions. And then if you want to connect with us, here are our connect so media, LinkedIn, and our email address, our website. Please feel free to ask any questions. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you said that news websites has grown to up to 40 sites. Have there been any work done to consolidate them and make them simpler? Uh, yeah, so our team manages 40, but across the ANU there are around 300 websites. <laughs> uh, we've done a lot of work to consolidate uh, some of the websites, uh, like between the research centers that had previously its own website, so now they are consolidated into the faculty or the college website. 
and uh, some of them some of them joined the research schools so so we've done like uh, lots of work uh, around that uh, to try to reduce the number of sites uh, but they pop up some of them pop up <laughs> because uh, for example the university created a research institutes now so each one of the research institutes now had to be its, its own website so so things are growing uh, a little bit year after year I think you had about 60. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, hi, just uh, wondering, have you been able to share your tech that you've created and your layouts and all of that uh, with the other colleges to kind of uplift all of ANU? Um, is that something that you're giving back to and, and to the central team and, and that? Or is everything kind of siloed? Uh, so, I, as I mentioned, like uh, ANU in its history had a, a decentralized way of, of working. So each of the faculties has its own web team, and they have uh, their own strategies uh, to develop, maintain, and to help this support. Some of them uh, also used uh, outsourcing. So there are some companies that work with those faculties. Some of them uh, do their own stuff. Uh, but we have shared like all this uh, content architecture with all the web team, but at the end, they are the ones that decide if they want to do their own thing or they want to use ours. But uh, yeah, we've, we've been trying to work more closely with with all the teams across the university, but uh, it's difficult uh, to s to have an impact from, uh, from a local web team to the whole university. Like uh, that's something that, uh, would be good to have uh, more support from the central to all the web teams, but uh, that's something that has been embedded in the history of ANU, so uh, the decentralized way of working. That's a question from me, uh, because you said that I think you are using multi-sites, right? Uh, multi-sites, Drupal, yes. uh, right? I mean, so uh, I know that you have many sites and you have uh, how you uh, face the situation like because each site had their own database how you do the configuration how you manage the configuration management i mean because do you mean the integration between no no whenever, whenever you have a uh, update to a, any configuration how do you because you have each site has separate database right yes. so, so when you have multi-site how you manage to send the uh, import export the uh, the configuration. Uh, so in in Drupal seven uh, we used uh, an open source system called Agir, and we used features. But in Drupal ten we are using uh, content synchronization, which is part of Drupal core, and uh, we use Drush. So uh, so for example, our central website is at web dot science. That's where we create all the content types, templates, and then we synchronize that site with all the all the other Drupal ten websites using Drush and um, and content uh, synchronization. Yeah, part of Drupal core. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay.